Welcome back. You're watching First Trace right here on ET. Now I'm joining Tanvir Gill right here on the show. And without any further ado, let's go across to Quest Corp. The management, remember, joins us because the company delivered its Q4 numbers. And it's been quite a strong set because the net profit has actually doubled. We have the sales as well that has jumped up a good 54% at 1,900 crore rupees. The stock, however, has tempered down a bit from the day's high. Let's introduce the management then. Mr. Ajit Isaac, the chairman and managing director of the company who joins us now on the show. Mr. Isa, good morning. Thanks for joining in. Congratulations because it's been a stellar quarter for you. To start with, tell us what drove the two-fold jump in your profits. Yeah, uh, so I'd like to give you some context for this. Uh, the point to note here is that this is our 41st consecutive quarter of growth. So across a decade of existence, every quarter, Quest has grown quarter on quarter. Compounded annual growth rate over, over a period of the last five years for revenue is in excess of about 45%. At the PAT level, it's about 79%. And uh, if you drill down to the current year, at 6,600 odd crores of revenue, we have uh, a growth of about 64% across the last year. Uh, at the EBITDA level, it's about 49%, and at the PAT level, 154. So uh, the story for Quest is actually its, its strategic plan uh, panning out uh, our model is beginning to play and uh, we, are, we are a cash generative company right now and uh, overall our return metrics are much in line with what has been projected. So this is the overall story. What worked for this quarter and for this year has been a terrific performance from our staffing business. Our staffing business has employees in excess of about 150,000 people today. It's the first company in India to cross the 150,000 mark. Overall, Quest employs about 260,000 people, making us among the largest private sector employers today in India. The point we noted about staffing is that they added 42,000 people in one, in one year, which no other company has done so far uh, in India. And that makes it the largest staffing company today in India. Also, our FMS business did very well. We are up about 120% in our total profits. Our EBITDA margins have also improved, and uh, with, a, uh, with about 55,000 people, it ranks among the largest in India. So these have been the two outstanding highlights that have driven the performance of Quest for this year. All right. Thanks, sir, for that, Mr. Isaac. By the way, what's the rationale for the further investments being made into Singapore entities, and what does this bring uh, to the table for the company? Comtel is uh, the largest IT staffing company in Singapore. We invested to buy about two-thirds of the company about two and a half years ago, and we were, we were obligated to buy the other one-third that's residual equity in the company. Uh, we think the markets in Singapore are ripe for an introduction of general staffing services in addition to professional staffing that we're currently in, engaged in there. The additional capital that's going into the company and to purchase the residual equity is to is to you know, uh, strengthen our equity position in the company and uh, it defines our, uh, our direction of uh, approach in terms of investing into a stable and growing economy of Singapore. Right. Do you think uh, margins will continue to remain at 5.6%? When can we see your margins expand and what will drive margin growth? Uh, we grew 23 basis points year on year in terms of our margins. We are uh, about 5.75% right now. We think there's a further upside available in terms of uh, increasing our margin profile. Uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we can grow this by about 50 basis points in the, la in the next one year, uh, especially with some of our uh, recent investments being uh, turnaround assets. And once they start turning around, I think we'll start seeing a margin expansion at the overall company level. Right. Post restructuring of Tobias Cook and Quest, we understand Quest will chart its own growth trajectory in the high growth opportunity space of human capital and allied services. Uh, can you tell us about the plan and strategy in place there? So that's a good question. First of all, uh, consequent to the spin-off that Thomas Cook is doing to its shareholders so that they hold shares directly in our company, we are delighted to have Fairfax directly hold shares in our company. They'll be the largest shareholder with about 33%. Along with me, we will have uh, a combined shareholding about 55%. The rest of it is public. Uh, that gives us the ability to steer the company and the ability to strategically direct the uh, trajectory of growth that this company is taking. Um, I think what, uh, uh, what analysts and what investors would do well to, to absorb is the fact that as we generate more cash, 
as our EBITDA keeps growing. By 2020, we perhaps will be a $100 million company by EBITDA and near about th that number by cash. So we have that much uh, investment ability coming into the company year on year, and that will further drive earnings for the company without diluting uh, stock. So we are getting into a sort of flywheel effect that you'll see at Quest, and uh, this year has been instrumental in getting us to that point where we're able to actually uh, see more cash being generated and have free cash that we will further invest into new business. Right, the dominant source of revenue from its uh, PNS uh, segment, uh, which contributes 95% of revenues, can you tell us how you see this segment shaping up? Will it remain the growth driver for you? So as a data point, 38% uh, of our total EBITDA comes from the PNS business and about 44% of sales. At about 4.6 to 4.8% EBITDA level, it is slightly lesser than the average EBITDA of Quest Corp itself. Uh, having said that, uh, our, our business mix and our product mix is going to change over the, last, over the next few years. Uh, we have a great addition in uh, the investment that we made into Monster, an internet asset that we bought about three months back. We're seeing very promising signs of the company turning around and we believe it will be a huge value creator for shareholders at Quest. Additionally, we've got two investments we've made in the customer lifecycle management business. One was the investment into Tata Business Support Solutions where we bought 51% and the Tatas are 49% shareholders in that. Uh, we expect to do about 850 crores of sales in that and a little more than $10 million of EBITDA. Uh, in addition to that, we also bought the aftermarket post-sales uh, break-fix uh, business of phones of HCL called HCL Care, now called DigiCare with us. Uh, that business we expect to do about 200 crores of sales this year. Uh, very promising business. We have about uh, 100 outlets in India and perhaps some of the largest uh, consumer durable stroke uh, phone repair service in India. With a billion two people in India, we expect that market to grow uh, and a structured player like us and an organized player like us will bring a more institutionalized approach to aftermarket repair services. And these, we believe, will be growth drivers for Quest. Okay, you know, Mr. Isaac, you have a proven track record in acquiring companies across existing and new verticals. Uh, tell us about some more acquisitions that are on the cards for you. So we raised about 870 crores of capital in the IPP that uh, we did in the last financial year, out of which we deployed about 350 crores and we've paid back debt of about 150. So we're still sitting on cash that we can deploy for uh, inorganic initiatives. Uh, we see more opportunities coming in the customer lifecycle space. We see opportunities coming in the technology business. So all these are businesses that are in excess of 8% EBITDA margin. All our, uh, we follow the principle of additionality in investments that we make. Uh, we look for uh, margin accretive and EPS accretive businesses that we'll invest in. And that's the approach that we will uh, adopt in, uh, in organic initiatives. Analysts uh, foresee 30% EPS CAGR for FI18 to FI22 and robust pad growth. Uh, are you on track for those numbers? So we have a job to do here, we, and we keep doing what we keep doing for the last 10 years. Uh, <clears throat> for the last 10 years, we've achieved these numbers. We've, we've, com we've had a compound annual growth rate of 40 odd percent. So uh, I believe we have the management horsepower. We have a terrific management team uh, and uh, deep client relationships that will help us further strengthen our market leadership position in many of our businesses. To expect us to grow 20% per annum is, I think, uh, fair. Uh, anything above that is a bonus. Uh, I know analysts are, are counting on us growing by about 30%. If you add on the layer of inorganic growth that we could do, this is a possibility. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, we are well placed to achieve some of these numbers. That would be my conclusion. All right, uh, Mr. Isaac, we leave it at that. Thanks so much. Congratulations once again on a stellar set of numbers, and we hope to talk to you once one of your acquisitions do fructify. That, of course, was Quest Corp for you. Like we pointed out, you know, it's a bit off from the day's high.